I'm Mark Golub, and in the news continues to be President Barack Obama's visit to Israel. On this, the second day, he visited Ramallah and met with Mahmoud Abbas. They gave a joint press conference. Then the president returned to Jerusalem to deliver his one major address while he's in Israel at the International Convention Center to an audience composed mainly of students from Israeli universities. Well, for some Israeli reaction to the president's visit thus far, we're most pleased to have on our phones from Jerusalem once again the columnist for the Jerusalem Post and Shalom TV commentator Izzy Liebler. Izzy, it's wonderful to be joining you once again. Thank you. Good to be with you again. So, Izzy, what's your reaction so far? What's the Israeli reaction thus far to the president's trip to Israel? Well, I think that it is a combination of relief and being stunned because nobody, none of us, anticipated that the president would come out with such warmth and with such commitment to Israel as he did. I mean, it is like a reverse picture of what took place five years ago in Cairo in our favor. And I must say, there has never been, to my mind, an American president that has made a Zionist a speech as President Obama did when he got off that plane. It was just breathtaking. And sure, we're not suggesting that, that means we're all on the same track but that we have a friend, that he's made up his mind, that he, that he and Israel are going to work together side by side. He's given the people of Israel a tremendous, tremendous sense of, tremendous sense of, uh, uh, how would one say, a sense of well-being in the belief that things have changed. It's a different President Obama. Now, Izzy, in the past, you have been at times critical of President Obama. So this is a real turnaround for you. Look, I've always been open-minded, and I judge politicians not by what is in their heart, but by their actions. And by President Obama's actions today, he put America on the basis of a relationship with Israel, which, despite the problems we're going to have in the future, and I don't want to suggest that they've all been overcome. We still have major differences over Iran. We will probably still have major differences over issues such as borders. But by and large, there's a feeling in Israel that President Obama is no longer indifferent uh, to, toward, to Israel. And the warmth he exuded is something which I think is tremendously important. It's, mm -hmm. it's given Israelis a great sense of satisfaction and a great feeling that America is a real ally and that we can reply and we can rely on the United States. And much of this, I think, reflects on the people. I mean, all the polls that you've had in America demonstrate this. The Congress demonstrates this. But President Obama, with all the problems we had in the past, uh, has done a complete turnabout. And we are very, very happy and relieved and look towards a period of cooperation with him, even when we have differences. None of the ugliness uh, of the tensions that existed in the past, I believe, are going to apply in the future. And we will still have differences. There are still differences over Iran that cannot be underestimated. There are still differences over the nature of the borders, but he's no longer pushing us. And look, he went to Ramallah yesterday, uh, today, and he told the Palestinians straight, the Israelis are offering unconditional uh, negotiations, negotiations without preconditions, go for it. Mm -hmm. And I think the Palestinians suddenly realized that they're no longer being bolstered with their intransigency. That's a, a sea change as far as we're concerned, and we're very happy. And do you have a sense, Izzy, that the, look, the way in which you are experiencing the Obama trip so far is an experience shared by the average Israeli in the street? Absolutely. Some Israelis will still be somewhat, they'll say, well, what are words? And I say to you that words are tremendously important. When an American president speaks the way he spoke, that's a message to the world. 
irrespective of what's been in the past. It's an extraordinarily important message, and it's also a message to our adversaries and enemies that the United States is not going to cut itself off from Israel, that we are friends and we will remain genuine allies. The warmth which he exuded, and when you compare and contrast the relationship he had and the way he was talking about Bibi, 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 Bibi all the time, yes. and he was calling him uh, by his first name, this was extraordinary when you consider the tensions that existed in the past. Yes, and, I, I wanted to ask you whether you did feel that the dynamic between President Obama and Bibi Netanyahu, and I watch it, I, I was struck that the entire dynamic between them was so different than we had come to expect and that it seemed to be there was nothing phony about it. And I want to press you on this. There will be Americans, there may be Israelis also, who will be cynical about the tone of the president's trip as if in some way this is for political expediency, not an expression of any change of heart. I'm asking you two things, therefore. Talk more about how you experienced, as you witnessed, the dynamic between these two world leaders, and what would you say to anyone, American or Israeli, who said to you, oh, Izzy, you're being taken in. It's all for show. I've already had a number of people saying that to me, and my response to that is, I'm not interested in what is in the heart of the politician, my prime minister, or the president of the United States. I'm interested in what they display. They displayed warmth, they displayed bonhomie, they displayed all, all the positive signs of a good relationship. To me, that's what counts, because it is actions, not trying to look into things. And by the way, words, as I said before, to me, in this context, have a dynamic of their own. Yes. But I am very, very hopeful. I must say, I, I anticipated that there would be an attempt to get closer to us, because I think he realized that people here disliked him. But I think he succeeded. I think that people like him now, or a lot of them do. They are going to count, you know, they're going to hold their breath and see what happens. But there's a new dynamic, and that new dynamic has enormous potential. Um, you know, Clinton was not always our way, but Clinton was loved because he was able to convey a certain warmth. And President Obama, who I never had it in him, was certainly able and achieved that till now. And there's not that much time to go. And I believe that there's going to be a great heaves of relief when he goes, because both parties are going to be delighted. Okay. I know the so, Israeli government... Izzy, what do you guess the reason for the change is? The reasons for the change are, A, I think he realizes that the Arabs have not delivered. B, I think he also realizes that with all the things he's done for the Arabs, his standing with Arabs is today even lower than that of President Bush. Thirdly, he knows that the American people want this. Fourthly, he wants to have a good relationship with Congress and he doesn't need to have Israel on the side. And fifthly, he sees perhaps that he made mistakes and that it's time for a change and he's moved. And to full credit to that. Now, that's not to say that we're at one with him. I hear you. We're I hear to you. have big differences still. But it's differences within the framework of friends, which, you know, we always said it, but we felt that we were not in the framework of friends. Today, I believe we can talk about friends. And that is his big success, and he's to be commended for it. And I don't care what my more right-wing uh, friends will be saying. To me, this was a political act of great importance for Israel. And ultimately, I hope, for the United States and certainly for American Jewry. Because as I said in a recent column, I felt that American Jewry was being taken for granted. Yes, yes. This yes. makes me take two steps backwards and say, perhaps not. By the way, it makes you again one of the most articulate voices and thoughtful voices on the world you were seeing. And it's why I hope everybody reads you and we'll put up your email address at the end of our discussion because if people are not receiving Izzy Liebler, your uh, email column, they're doing themselves a disservice. Um, you know, I 
watched what you watched. And as I said, I spoke to Ron Campius of the JTA yesterday, and I said to him, I have been at times very, very critical of President Obama, and I don't consider myself left or right. I consider myself an example of a, a Jewish centrist here in America, and there are things that please me about the president and things that upset me. I have been very ups I was very upset after the Cairo speech. I was upset with some of the way in which he articulated the, the I exaggerated in my mind the importance of settlements as an obstacle to peace. And I think that there was a tension that I did not understand why it was necessary. I minded the fact that when he came into office, is he? He was saying that maybe some distance, some space between Israel and America would move the peace process forward because the Arab world needed to know that Israel and the U.S. were not in lockstep with one another. And some of the other things he said really concerned me. At the same time, I thought the speech he gave at the U.N., we talked about that, was a wonderful speech by an American president. And now I watch him come to Israel and I experience the exact same thing you did. I have found this trip so far to be stunning. And yet I know that there are those in America who are such ideologues on the left and such ideologues on the right that whomever they oppose or support can do either no wrong or no good. And I'm worried that here in America, those hardliners on the Jewish right just won't give any credit at all to the president for what is clearly, for whatever reason, as you say, clearly a major change in administration policy. I fully endorse what you're saying. I believe that most of them will. We're always going to have a hard core of extremists both on the left and on the right. But I believe that most American Jews, including many who were very angry with President Obama, will hold their breath, as I said, because there is a lot more to come and that real negotiations have not started. But I believe that there is hope. And if you are having differences within an environment where a man says the things that President Obama said you can even take criticism, disagree, and not feel that there's total indifference to our position. Because he spoke with a passion. He spoke with a, all right, people say it's not in his heart. I don't care. He spoke, the president of the most important country in the world came to our small country, came and spoke to the Jewish people and said really good things that not even he, any of his predecessors mm -hmm. came close to saying in such terms. By the way, is he give us, is he excuse me, give us an example of one or two things you heard him say which you said, "Oh my goodness, that's wonderful." Look, he talked about Israel in terms of the Jewish state. He used Hebrew terms within it. He talked about the 3000 years of Jewish continuity with the, with Eretz Israel. He, he talked about the things that the Jewish people have gone through. Look, everything he said with such passion and with such style, it was done with a sensitivity. It, it was tremendous. Uh, and, you know, I, I had a feeling that I may have misjudged him even. But I want to look towards the future. I don't want to get too carried away because now I'm getting a little bit emotional and that's dangerous for a commentator because I don't want to have to eat my words. Okay. But I don't care. Whatever has happened, what has happened here this last 20 hours has been marvellous. I don't think it's going to change in the next 10 hours. And I believe that this in itself, irrespective of what comes in the, in the future, is a very good thing for the Jewish people. Okay. And we should all applaud him. Okay. I want to give you some examples of things he said. I want you to comment for me. He went to Ramallah. He met with uh, Mahmoud Abbas. And then he did a joint press conference with uh, Mr. Abbas. And... He basically said that while settlements are not constructive to peace, there can be no preconditions to restarting the peace process. When he first came to office, he basically said a precondition to peace would be a cessation of all settlement building and settlement, even internal growth. Here he was saying that 
although settlements in his mind are an obstacle of some kind, do not, are not constructive, they should not block any negotiations, any peace process from resuming, and he sort of challenged the Palestinians to meet with Bibi Netanyahu in, in the way the Prime Minister has said to them time and time again, I will come any place, go any place, at any time that you want to meet. Is he, to me, that was a major reversal, and I believe very constructive. What's your sense? A absolutely, absolutely. I mentioned it just beforehand. You've ex elaborated on it. It was in in critically important, because what he's really saying is, stop this nonsense about preconditions, negotiate without conditions, and let's get around the table and make peace. My view is that they won't, because they can't, and some of them don't want to, but he's put it on the table, he's put the onus on them, and now for the first time, it's an open table, and the world will be able to see. If they don't take up his offer, it's not going to be Israel again and again and again bashed for making more and more unilateral concessions and getting nothing in return. By the way, while he was in Ramallah, there was rocket fire into Israel. And Izzy, he condemned the rocket fire while in Ramallah. I thought that was significant. Yes, absolutely. And it's indicative of the nature of who we're dealing with, that they were stupid enough to do that even when the president is here to make him, to send a message. But uh, look, we are still going to go through very difficult times. I don't want to suggest that all is over. All I want to say is in terms of timing and in terms of things that are happening, this was an important and positive event, one of the most positive events in our relationship with the United States since he came to office. And I'm very happy about it. Yes. By the way, I want to push you on one thing you said, and um, tell me whether you think again in, in this uh, sort of uh, euphoria, moderated euphoria, you, are, oh, you overstated things. You said that some of the things the president said were almost unprecedented in that they were never said by any other American president. Is that true? What, were there things that you heard him say that you feel were the first time an Israeli, pre an American president has ex articulated American policy in the way that Obama did on this visit? Look, it's a question of degree. In the concentrated three or four minutes that he spoke on his arrival, he gave a statement, which like, by the way, his United Nations statement, which also was unprecedented. Absolutely. Boy, that I agree 100%. He, was, he did the equivalent for the Jewish linkage to Israel and America's commitment to Israel. And it wasn't just, we've got, uh, you, you've got our back and all the other cliches. He actually talked about Jewish history. He talked about our ancestors. He talked about our 3,000 years of, of communication. And look, he's going tomorrow, uh, and uh, he's going to see the Israel Museum. He's going to see the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's another kind of link with 3,000 years of Jewish history. I, I, I think no other president has done it in that way. It's, it's a question of qualitatively uh, speaking, in such a compressed manner, to have spoken the way he did, with such love and commitment, I, 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 was, I was blown and happy. Now, in Jerusalem, when he spoke to the Israeli students, he said that the only way Israel will survive is for, will survive as a Jewish democratic nation, I should add, is with the creation of an independent, viable Palestinian state. Do you have any problem with that? I have no problem with that, other than to say that until such time as we have a peace partner, we can only say we want to have it, set it aside, and have it when the time comes. But we have to have a peace partner. We can't have a Palestinian state, which is going to be another Hamas time. Yes, by the way, my sense is, and again, you tell me if you heard it differently, if he was pushing anybody this time, he was pushing the Palestinians and saying to them, in essence, if there's an irresponsible partner here, it's you, as opposed to the way he spoke in his first term, especially in the first couple of years of his term, as if it was Israel's fault for no movement in the peace process. I heard that as a shift do you feel I'm overstating it? No, 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 you're not overstating it. It was a reversal, a complete reversal of form. I mean, 
where we were the black ones, he's now even-handed in the real sense. I mean, he's, he's pointing out where there are problems and he's not going through a process of distancing himself from Israel and showing daylight between Israel and all the other things. Look, let's not be under illusions, though. We still have a very difficult area in which and region in which we live in. He still has a policy which tends to appease the, the Islamist groups. But notwithstanding that, what he directed towards us, the positive things that he said towards us, went a long way to make me feel much more comfortable with the United States and the knowledge that we have a real partner. I understand. He used a phrase, by the way, in Hebrew that meant you are not alone when he discussed the issue of Iran. Did that resonate with you? It did, but there we have a problem because we're still talking about timelines and there are still nervous twitches. Although my feeling is that there is now a recognition by uh, President Obama that if they become nuclear and he does not act on his commitments, he will not lose face with Israel. He's going to lose face with friend and foe and in the whole of the world. Mm -hmm. And I think he realizes that. And I hope, uh, although a lot of my colleagues don't agree with me, my hope is that he will act before it's too late. My real worry is that he does a deal with them whereby they are half a nuclear f uh, power and, and gives them that opportunity, which will put us in a very awkward situation because it would enable them to go nuclear in a matter of weeks. That's one of the things that I'm sure, behind closed doors, uh, our Prime Minister and he are discussing at great length. One of the other things that made you very upset with him, and you and I had a slight disagreement on this, was his referring to the 67 borders as the starting point for some kind of two-state solution negotiations. I did not hear him dis discuss at any point or address at any point during this visit the border 67, not 67. Number one, did I miss something? Did you hear anything? And in general, has this trip given you any comfort on that issue? This is still an area of concern for me because I don't think he yet appreciates what those uh, indefensible 67 borders would mean if we used them and all the talk about swaps in the context of this. But at least he's not saying that that's an opening benchmark and he hasn't pushed us on us. He has given his expression. He hasn't diverted from American policy in this area. And that's something that we are going to have to negotiate. But that is an area of concern for us. Those are the two major areas, Iran and the 67 borders. Now, tomorrow, Izzy, uh, the president is going to be visiting not only the Israel Museum and seeing the Dead Sea Scrolls, he'll also be visiting Mount Herzl, Israel's national cemetery, and he is scheduled to stand with Bibi Netanyahu at, Bibi, at the brother of Bibi, Bibi's brother's grave, Yonatan Yoni Netanyahu, who, of course, led the wonderful, miraculous raid on Entebbe in 1976. And unfortunately, Yoni was the only Israeli soldier to die in that operation. He is scheduled to go and stand at that grave with Bibi Netanyahu and then go to Yad Vashem, uh, have a tour with the uh, chairman of it, uh, as well, uh, Abner Shalev, as well as with Rabbi Israel Mayor Lau. But, you know, there's something very powerful about a president going with an Israeli prime minister and standing at the prime minister's brother's grave. And I think that there is something also powerfully symbolic in that. What's your sense? I agree. I fully agree. But do not also underestimate going for a president of the United States going to the grave of Hertz, patriarch after the fall of the Zionist movement, that too is something extraordinarily yes. significant, particularly in the context of the history of the last four years. That's just another example of making us feel comfortable that he is a friend. You're saying just going to the actual grave, the monument to Theodore Herzl, which is why the cemetery is called Mount Herzl, um, 
since Herzl was the founder of the Zionist movement and basically the father of the modern state of Israel, the fact that a president is going to Herzl's monument, to his grave, is also an important symbolic statement. Important. Particularly, I don't have to tell you, you've seen some of the debates and some of the poisonous stuff that's been coming out in some of your own media about Zionism, uh, uh, real uh, revisionist stuff, which goes back to the early part of the century when there were Zionism. Absolutely, as you, um, and when we speak next time, I do want you to address some of the things that are being written. They are, to me, shocking, upsetting. There are Jews who are now being published in the op-ed pages of the New York Times suggesting that the state of Israel was a mistake and that it cannot be justified on any intellectual or even emotional grounds. It's a very upsetting development, and you and I will continue to explore that as well. But it is wonderful just for you to give me some sense of how you feel about Obama's trip. It, is, it reflects very much how I feel. I think any honest American uh, and any honest American Jew has to be very, very heartened as you are. And maybe this does signify, in a surprising, maybe shocking way, it does signify a change in U.S. policy that can herald some positive movement and some real wonderful cooperation between our two governments. And you and I will continue to monitor it, and I will continue to look to you for insight and, and wisdom, not only on the Israeli scene, but on the Jewish world as a whole. There is nobody like you, and I am so grateful you are part of this Shalom TV family. Thank you so much. Thank you. By the way, give me one more time your email address for anybody who wants to receive your weekly uh, column. Wordfromjerusalem.com or I Liebler, L I L E I B L E R, at Liebler.com. Be well. We'll talk again soon. All the very best. Thank you. Chag Sameach. Those are the thoughts of Izzy Liebler, Jerusalem Post columnist. And my own sense is he at the moment is the preeminent columnist on the world Jewish scene. I hope every one of you is reading him every week. He writes beautifully and he thinks wonderfully. And he really is wonderful to have here as part of the Shalom TV family. Those are my reactions. I would love to know yours. Are you as upbeat about what this trip by the president to the state of Israel symbolizes about the future, the immediate future of U.S.-Israeli relations? Are you cynical? And do you see it in a different way? Please email me, write me, post on our Facebook wall, tweet me. I look forward to hearing from you. Until the next time, I'm Mark Golub. Be well, my friends.